Bro, you're wasting this on the wrong thing, y'all. God damn it. It's good visually. Visually, it's good. You know, visually, it pops off. Um... And that is the only good thing I can say about Way of Waterman is watch it in 3D. Those underwater scenes are quite spectacular. They are quite amazing. So from a pure visual level, it's amazing. Here's the thing. Blade Runner. So, whoa, whoa, what, the, what the hell does Blade Runner have to do with the Way of Water? People will say that, you know, Blade Runner's story isn't that sophisticated, isn't that deep. And people who criticize Blade Runner, they say that, yeah, but the story's a bit weak, so the story's really popping off. But in my view, it's a very effective story. It's not a very complicated story, but it's, it's, it's very effective and simple. It's simple, but effective. And it has a very strong core and it has strong characters. So it doesn't really need to complicate itself with technicalities of a story. And on a visual level, it is crazy. So it is a visually arresting film, but with a very effective, straightforward story. The issue with Way of Water here is... That's why I was to push a boy out here. Because as I was watching it, I said to myself that this is the same guy that gave us Terminator, Aliens, True Lies, and this. What I can is one of the greatest, arguably the greatest film I've ever, ever made. And I think that um, the reality of the matter is this, is that, you know, um, people get old. People get old, you know. Um, and I think when people get old, they have different priorities. Things mean more to, to, to them because as I'm, I'm watching it and I'm like, James, Jimmy. You see, in 09, maybe this could work. So much has the world has changed so much because we have we've, we've we've had Black Panther, Woman King have popped off. We've had a push for more representation in films. We've had more voices been allowed to tell their stories because that's my issue with um, emancipation and Will Smith getting white people to write emancipation. It's a different world. That we're living in in 2022. And in a post-George Floyd, post-BLM, post-Black Panther, post-Wakanda Forever, post-Crazy Rich Asians, post-everywhere and um, everything everywhere all at once. In that world of where it's, it's, the story is now different. This story of white man enters native place and tries to be one with the natives and white man tries to talk like the natives. It's just, in today's world, that story, it, it don't work, bro. It don't work. It worked in the 90s. It was great. All in it worked. In 2022, with after Crazy Rich Asians, everything everywhere all at once, Black Panther, Woman King, Wakanda Forever, all this kind of stuff, the emergence of Iran Kogler, the emergence of the dance, the emergence of these other voices, white man in native place, white man trying to be like the natives and one with nature, no, man, in 2022, James, no. And the most annoying thing is that there are some great elements in this film. And those elements sit myself that, James, you should be doing a sci-fi movie. You should, you should be making a world that's a sci-fi world, a science fiction world. This nature, white man in nature stuff, nah, this, nah, it's, it's trash. I'm, see, I was trying to explain, but it's trash. And for me, it's annoying. It pains me so much because this, this film means a lot to me. This film's been to be Tony B, I know you're out there. Tony B, I know you're out there. You know how much this film means means to us, bro. And I'm like, and my because the, the issue with James Cameron is like he said, oh, there's gonna be Avatar 3, 4, 5, and 6. I was like, the characters, they don't walk. The characters don't pop off. The world is not, the world is cool. And I think some people will escape the world. But for a to you to have like a Star Wars S kind of thing. Or even in Matrix S, because people people know who Morpheus is. They know who Neo is. They know who Trinity is. People know who Luke Skywalker is. They know who Darth Vader is. 
They knew who Lando is. They, these are characters that are well drawn. No one cares about Jake Sully. No one cares about Quaritch. No one cares about Nate Siri. No one cares about Enya. No, like I'm sorry, no one cares about these dudes. These characters, no one cares about these dudes. These dudes. And for you to have a world that people can come back to and revisit, you've got to care about the characters. Characters are weak source. I mean, pain to say this, man. If the characters are weak source, and bro, I mean, halfway through, this, I was like, I mean, what am I, what, what am, what am I watching? What am I? I this is for me. This is the guy that gave us that and uh, replay against the queen. Did he see the replay against the queen? Did you see what he did in aliens, bro, bro? I've, I've, I, I just I, I brought them um, the aliens. Man, what is that? Hold up. I brought this off my amigo. I brought this off my amigo alien special edition. I'm gonna watch this very soon. I mean, when when on, on when when I'm on my Christmas break, I'm gonna watch this. The alien special edition, which is the one you should watch because the normal one is fine. The alien special edition. That's what I'm gonna watch. Because I know, because I know what your boy can do. I know what he can do in any James in any of this. So much just so James, no, no. This Pandora world, you've you've invested in the wrong thing. You invested your time, your amazing times into the wrong thing, bro. Because it's annoying because I'm because I look at the spaceships, I look at how he depicts war, how he depicts the battles, how just some of the kind of tech that he's evolved and just his creative brain. I'm like, bro. You're wasting this on the wrong thing, yo. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, man. Sugar fudge. Mm. Cuz you're all the way back from the cinema man. I was just like, what 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 what? Because you have to understand that this is just this is James Cameron. This is if you're of a certain age, James Cameron's not a joke. If you're of a certain age, James Cameron is James, he's not a joke. Now forget about Titanic. He's not a joke. And I'm sorry, man, it's like the, you can, the visuals can be amazing as they are, they can be as superb as they are. If the story isn't strong enough, the characters, the characters are not strong enough, it doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter, bro. And because the scary thing, guys, the scary thing was as soon as the credits rolled, I was, as soon as the credits rolled, I was like, I forgot something about the film. Yeah, some crazy, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not watching this again. Here's the thing, guys. On a visual level, oh, this is easily beats the first film. Story wise, I prefer the first film. <laughs> like, for me, that's the first film. It ain't perfect. I know it's fan it is. I've seen that like about four or five times. And if it's on again, I'd watch it again because as a story in terms of a beginning, middle, and the end, I'm like, it's cool. I can watch this. This, nah, bro. Nah, bro. God damn it. God damn it. Someone needs to just tell James Cameron that Pandora ain't it, bro. Come out and create a sci-fi world. Sci-fi war. Something with a bit more edge and something with amazing characters that I know that you can produce. This whole nature love, oh, 